Welcome into the bunker of General Gridiron, Field Marshal of Football Forecasting. We're about to map out the way this college football weekend is going to go. Will your favorite team be marching to victory, or will the enemy be taking your battle flag? The calendar is now turned to November, the presidential election is behind us, and now the Pac-12 finally suits up this 10th week of the college gridiron season. It ought to be fun. So grab your helmet and man those battle stations. We're ready for a week 10 round of General Gridiron's football foretelling. Stanford at Oregon. And speaking of the Pacific 12, the tree will supplant itself north of the Golden State's border for an opening night matchup at Alton Stadium. The low-flying birds are one of the two conference teams ranked as they start play, number 12. Rather impressive. But replacing the QB currently suiting up for the L.A. Chargers is no easy task. The Brainiacs from the farm probably thought football was not about to be played this fall on the left coast, but now they can put the books down for two months and see if Stanford can pull an upset to get things going. However, in this one, the home crowd's going to be singing shout in their best Animal House-style way before the game wraps. The Generals' victor, Oregon. Texas A&M at South Carolina. So, this is a trophy game that evidently has been missing its trophy for most of this newfound cross-divisional matchup. The bottom trophy was sculpted nearly 10 years back at a cost of $4,000, but for some unexplained reason, the winner of this series really hasn't been given the trophy. It's been hiding in San Antonio at the Alamo's archives. The reason? The trophy's namesake, James Bonham, was a South Carolinian and a USC alumnus that died fighting at the Alamo in 1836. Thanks to current Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush, Jeb's son and a Longhorn, he's unearthed the bottom trophy and it ought to be at williams Bryce Stadium when that Aggie Munch declares, come and take it. And ain't no way James Bonham's alma mater gets it back. The Generals' victor, Texas A&M. Oklahoma State at Kansas State. Two teams that evidently took last Saturday off rendezvous in the Little Apple for a mid-afternoon opportunity to keep the Big 12 title game in sight. Sure enough, the Pokes were lassoed with their first L against the hated Horns, a game where OSU completely dominated every statistical category save one, turnovers. Four turnovers for the mullet man squad. K-State was cut down at WVU and is jubilant for the chance to show the home crowd in the Sunflower State that they'll have their pounce back when this horde of wildcats springs back into action. Look for the orange-clad Aggies to gift more turnovers in this close contest. The Generals' victor, Kansas State. Air Force at Army. What to coach Jeff Munkin and the Black Knights of the Hudson and Babylon, New York native Rodney Dangerfield have in common? No respect. I'm telling you. At 6-1 with the only setback coming on the road to number 6 Cincinnati, the United States Military Academy is madder than alumnus William T. Sherman when he marched through Georgia. A cure to the slight? Get that Commander-in-Chief's trophy back on post. The sailors currently hold on to it. And speaking of the middies, the bird easily soared over Navy already, so a win at Mikey Stadium will send the trophy to Colorado Springs. Fly high, USAPA. For the first time since 2016, this hardware is headed to the Rockies. The General's victor, Air Force. North Carolina at Duke. The victory bell is another item up for the taking this first college football weekend in November. Since 1948, these arch rivals, separated by only nine short miles, have clashed for the right to take this old railway bell that was once on a southern railway locomotive. The freshly shaven David Cutcliffe and his bunch of Durham Devils have had a forgettable start to this most unusual season. With the thumping of UNC last weekend at Wallace Wade, oh oh wait, that was UNC Charlotte, Duke whacked 53-19, When the UNC Chapel Hill variety slips in with a lot to play for, fueled by the lofty arm of Sam Howell, that bell will stay painted in Carolina blue. The Generals' victor, North Carolina. Ahead on General Gridiron, a pair of Pac-12 contests and a top four Clemson Notre Dame ACC affair has the Generals' attention. And you know we have a big pick for the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. All that lies just ahead when General Gridiron gets right back. Howdy soldiers, this is General Gridiron back with you. Each week this fabulous football forecast is heard on some of the finest radio stations where college football rocks, including WLIL AM 730 and 102.7 in Lenore City, Tennessee. The legendary WLIL, radio home of the Lenore City Panthers. 
and in Monticello, Mississippi on WDRO-FM 101.3, Everything Lawrence County. We appreciate all of our radio affiliates. Now, let's get back into the football fight. Arizona State at USC. These two schools really don't like each other, and that makes for a beautiful way to get the Pac-12 resuscitated inside the Coliseum. ASU played 32 true or redshirt freshmen in a season that concluded last year with a Sun Bowl victory over Florida State. That number includes Jaden Daniels, who will be back behind center for Herm Edwards' Desert Dwellers. The team wearing the Cardinal color jersey in this conference clash steps up to the plate as the number 20 team in all the land. After surviving the offseason, Coach Helton knows that this year is put up or shut up. And since the last time SC hit the field, fellow Tinseltown teams, the Lakers and the Dodgers, have captured glory so fans have no margin for mediocrity. In this one, the men of Troy ride gallantly. The Generals' victor, USC. Tulsa at Navy. What in the world is the General of Gridiron Glory doing wasting ink on an American contest pitting the Naval Academy and Tulsa? Don't sleep on the Golden Hurricane, which enters this high sea siege 3-1 and one, and bubbling just under the top 25. Again, don't sleep on TU, especially after that escape versus ECU last week. Advice well received. Captain Kane and six-year coach Philip Montgomery spend their way to Annapolis with a proven battle plan to put holes all in the middies flat top as running back T.K. Wilkerson will be ready to steal a star from the Admiral on deck when he sails right through and over the Naval Academy defense. The Generals' victor, Tulsa. Clemson at Notre Dame. For only the fourth time in the regular season, these two college football powers collide. Clemson will play for only the second time in the shadows of Touchdown Jesus. 16-10, the South Carolina Ag School won back in 1979 when Billy Light at quarterback led the visitors to victory. The Tigers' number one quarterback of the top team in college football today is supposed to be sidelined a second week. China virus got him. So this game featuring number one Clemson and number four Notre Dame could get real interesting. Brian Kelly, Ian Book, and that leprechaun D will get up for the top ACC game of the year. But can freshman DJ Ugalele rally the Tigers a second week? Yes, he can. The Generals' victor, Clemson. Washington at California. Chase Garbers will be steering the home team's offense when the Hounds from Seattle settle in at Berkeley. Garbers has started 19 of the 21 games he's played for at Cal, completing 61% of his passes. For UW, put these names down on the refrigerator to memorize. All three might see some action Saturday. Jacob Sermon, Dylan Morris, and Sacramento State transfer Kevin Thompson. But the name to really commit to memory in this matchup is Jimmy Lake, new head coach at Washington. Strawberry Canyon's going to be empty for this ESPN late-nighter, but the scoreboard will be full with points. The Generals victor, Washington. Florida versus Georgia. Jacksonville once again becomes the football capital of the South this football Saturday, or at least Dixie's party capital. Ain't nothing like the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, even if this 2020 edition is a bit socially distanced. Ugga appears to be a bit befuddled since that second half in Tuscaloosa, and when that cunning canine plops down at this evenly split stadium and the folks see just how tenacious he's going to be, Albert and Alberta Gator will both jump out of the swamp and chew that dog and spit him out in this top 10 CBS game of the week. The Generals' victor, Florida. We've already looked at the weekend's biggest battles across the nation, but hang on to your helmet, there's more around the corner. We'll be back in just a second to wrap up this week's General Gridiron with our Rapid Fire Picks. This is General Gridiron back with you. We've already maneuvered through this weekend of CFB Frontline College Football Showdowns. Now it's time to fix bayonets and storm the field with our rapid-fire football forecast. Mississippi State finally wins against Vanderbilt. Washington State takes down Oregon State. Pittsburgh punches Florida State. Cincinnati heckles Houston. Virginia Tech rings Liberty's Bell. UCLA claws Colorado. East Carolina sinks Tulane. Eastern Kentucky cuts down Stephen F. Austin. Michigan rallies at Indiana. Hawaii hangs 10 or more on New Mexico. Ohio State runs roughshod over Rutgers. Coastal Carolina stays perfect versus South Alabama. Penn State bamboozles Maryland. Iowa State bests Baylor. 
Marshall Malls, UMass, Wisconsin Badgers, Purdue. North Alabama pulls the FCS versus FBS upset at Southern Miss. West Virginia shoots down Texas. Arkansas hog ties Tennessee. And Minnesota maneuvers past Illinois. Well, troops, you can now put your swords back in their scabbards. We're all out of picks on this edition of General Gridiron. We'll be back again next week. Same General Gridiron time, same General Gridiron station. So don't forget to tune us in on the radio, Facebook, YouTube TV, or download the Y'all Show free on iTunes podcast. And don't forget to tell your friends all about the show. Just search for General Gridiron. This is John Rawl, the General of Gridiron Glory, thanking you for letting me be part of your weekend celebration. General Gridiron is a production of Y'all. For more, log on to y'all.com, the ultimate guide to the South. That'll be all.